let me understand this right. You stopped. Look at that. That's me, I think. Now, is that you? That's how you sleep at night? <laughs> yes. You wear that? That is how I sleep yeah, at night. Without your hat. <laughs> <laughs> so you kind of stepped away from music and uh, devoted all your time to raising your girls, right? Just trying to keep up with them, yes. Uh, uh huh. And how old are they now? They're uh, 21, 19, and 17. We have the, the last baby's a senior in high school. So. so is she the only one left in the house? She's Yes, she is. Well, she's not really at the house that much. She's trying every after-school activity she can to keep from coming home, you uh -huh. know? So it's, uh, so yeah, it, from three to two, these are kind of the bittersweet years. From three to two, you really didn't, the house didn't get that quiet. Mm -hmm. But from two to one, it turned into a morgue. It's and quiet. It's just quiet. So uh, uh, that's why I love holidays because for three minutes you get them back at the same table yeah. you know, and, and get to love on them and squeeze on them. So. Yeah, well, you're a great dad. I mean, the fact that you actually walked away from, you're such an amazing entertainer to, to stay home and raise your kids, that's, that's incredible, really. Well, that's very sweet. I, yeah. I, say, um, I appreciate that, but the truth is, that's a gift from God and the people, because I think if everybody was allowed that luxury, I think 99% of us parents would take it. And I really thought staying home every day, it wouldn't fly by so fast, but it still just flew by. They, I guess maybe because they're girls or something, but they just grow up so fast. And are they musical, or does anybody want to be in the business? Uh, the first two love to listen to the radio. <laughs> and, and then the baby actually has been bitten by the bug, so she, she loves to play and sing, and, and she's got the gift. So, so uh, we'll see what each one of them wants to do. They're so young in their life, they're going to change their mind a yeah. thousand times. Between them. I think it would be cool to have your dad as Garth Brooks, and it would be hard because you're going to get compared, and so it's a rough thing for her, I would imagine. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, for one, she's, she can run laps around me when it comes to talent. Mm -hmm. She's so far ahead of anywhere where I was uh, to her age, so I don't, I don't know if she's going to get compared to me. I would think growing up in a house with Trisha Yearwood would be... Kind yeah. of tough because yeah, that's, there's, that's true. there's one of the greatest female singers ever. So yeah. uh, she's that actually going to take a look and see what it's like. Yeah. yeah. And you and Trisha have been uh, friends for a long, long time, right? Right. And then after how many years was it before you actually got together romantically? We met in 87. And uh, we, uh, Sandy and I got divorced in 2000. And me and Miss Sherwood got married in 2005. Mm -hmm. and, and how is that to be friends with somebody for that long. And then what is it? Was it like a gradual thing? Or was it all, all of a sudden one day you're like, wait a minute. Do you like, really want to get into this? I, I mean, do. That's, really? I, I really do. Seriously. Yeah, okay. why not? All right. Here's, here's a strange thing. <laughs> I not believe we're really going to do this. You meet, a, you meet somebody. Kit Blazy introduced me and Ms. Sherwood. Mm -hmm. And he goes, I knew you were going to like her when she left. She goes, what do you think? I said, well, it's strange, because I felt that feeling like when you just meet your wife but I'd been married for 13 months. Mm -hmm. And so you being married, it's gotta be right. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, this is who you went to college with. Yeah. And you, you were married in front of God and your family and everything, and you keep hacking, you work, and you work, and you work. And then comes that time where you're looking at the rest of your life going, how do you wanna live it? And this was somebody that I always enjoyed being around, and we had a lot more in common than I ever dreamed we did. And so we started seeing each other after, uh, after uh, the divorce, uh, we came off tour, so we'd known each other music-wise. Yeah. But we got to see each other as people, and I got to tell you, if you like her and don't know her, you'll love her. If you love her and don't know her, you're going to worship her. She's 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 the real deal. And uh, that's beautiful. Very lucky. <laughs> Mr. Wood and myself and Sandy have pledged that we're going to take these kids all the way to college, and then once the kids go off to college, then we've got our own thing to do, and the kids kind of you become that parent from having kids in school to having kids in college, which they really don't call you very much, and if they do, it's usually for money or something, mm -hmm. you know, at that mm -hmm. point. So uh, we know we've got our life ahead of us now, and it's, it's our choice, whatever it is we're gonna do, but we've got one final job doing, that's get this baby through high school. Wow, well, that's amazing, and that's what it should be. I mean, it's all about the kids, and the fact that you remain friends and devoted to the most important task, which is making sure they're healthy and happy and safe. And, and it really is, I, I believe that. I believe when you meet someone, you, your soul knows right away. And the fact that you fought that and the fact that you tried to do the right thing um, is very admirable of you. Well, but I, again, I'm glad you got to be with the person that your soul wants to be with. That's well, a beautiful I gotta thing. Well, I got to tell you, this is, uh, I never knew it could be like this. I never knew that every day you could wake up and feel like this. And I have God and I have Ms. Sherwood to thank for this. Very sweet. You, you deserve it. Good. You're an amazing guy.